Menopause and blood pressure might not seem to be completely related on the surface, but they're actually pretty closely tied together. And even though you won't be able to stop menopause from happening, you can definitely do a lot to help keep your blood pressure from getting out of control. Your blood pressure is a pretty important metric to pay attention to. I'm sure you know that already. It can be really sneaky too, and you won't necessarily feel it. And you won't look a certain way just because you have high blood pressure. In fact, a lot of people don't even know that their blood pressure is elevated unless they go into the doctor and get a reading. But living with high blood pressure for a long period of time can lead to stroke and other life-threatening conditions, so please be aware. Now, your blood pressure is the force that's exerted by the blood that's circulating already in your body against the walls of your arteries as your heart pumps. When you go to the doctor and you have the blood pressure cuff put on your arm, it gives you a combination of two different numbers your systolic pressure over your diastolic pressure. 120 over 80 is generally considered a safe upper limit of good blood pressure. But blood pressure that's higher than 120 over 80 tells you that your heart's just working too hard to move blood through your arteries. And over time, this extra blood pressure can harm your heart, your blood vessels, and other organs. Now, of course, I hope you're not dealing with high blood pressure at all right now, but if you're a woman and you're going through menopause, it's not uncommon at all to see a rise in this reading. So in this video, I'm going to explain why high blood pressure tends to show a big spike in women during and after menopause. And because I lean very hard on lifestyle, I'm going to give you a few things that you can do from that perspective that might also be able to help you maintain healthier blood pressure through menopause and years to come. In case we have not met, my name is Tracy D. Mitchell. I'm a board certified Mayo Clinic health and wellness coach and author of the book, The Belly Burn Plan. I hold a master's degree in health and nutrition education. And for the last 20 years, I have been working with women like you, helping you live your healthiest life. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get regular video updates, each created with your health in mind. So first and foremost, please talk to a medical practitioner if you're concerned about high blood pressure or you think you might have it. This video is meant for informational purposes only, but it is so very important to stay on top of your blood pressure in an appropriate way. So when it comes to menopause, our bodies have a lot more to worry about than just temperature regulation. I mean, hot flashes are uncomfortable, but small peas in terms of where our concerns should rank. According to the CDC, just under 6% of women under 40 have high blood pressure. Between the ages of 40 and 59, the percentage of women with high blood pressure jumps to 30%. And close to 70% of women who are 60 plus are living with high blood pressure. But why does blood pressure seem to jump through the perimenopause years and beyond? Well, a big part of the reason has to do with estrogen. Now, estrogen plays a key role in regulating blood pressure and its decline during menopause can impact cardiovascular health, quite significantly, in fact. With that said, here are four ways that estrogen specifically affects your blood pressure at this transitional time in your life. First of all, estrogen improves vascular relaxation. And what this translates to is that estrogen essentially helps blood vessels stay flexible by encouraging nitric oxide production. Now, nitric oxide is a substance that allows vessels to relax and widen, and this helps you maintain healthy blood pressure. But when estrogen drops, so does nitric oxide production, which during menopause may cause blood vessels to become stiffer, resulting in higher blood pressure. Another way of thinking about this is that blood just likes to move easier through relaxed vessel walls. It makes sense. Another way is that estrogen helps your liver produce enzymes that regulate HDL cholesterol, the good stuff. With less estrogen, your liver produces less HDL cholesterol. Thus, the ratio of LDL or bad cholesterol increases. And this may lead to a buildup of plaque in your arteries, increasing the risk of high blood pressure. Plaque narrows your arteries, and like traffic on a road makes it harder to drive smoothly, plaque in your arteries makes it a lot harder for blood to flow more easily. And the third way that estrogen affects you is fluid balance. Estrogen regulates salt and fluid balance in your body, which affects how your kidneys handle sodium. When estrogen decreases, your body may retain more sodium, which can lead to increased blood pressure. How this works is because the sodium that's in your body that your kidneys aren't getting rid of increases fluid in your body and this extra fluid causes high blood pressure. Number four is through stress management. It just so happens to be that estrogen is great at regulating our body's stress response. It helps you not sweat the small stuff as much. But lower estrogen can lead to higher cortisol levels. Cortisol is your stress hormone, which can raise 
blood pressure over time. Now stress, whether it's real or in your head, puts your body into a state of fight or flight. And this fight or flight state, also known as a sympathetic nervous response, kicks up your blood pressure. So those are a few ways that less estrogen or lower estrogen through menopause can result in high blood pressure. Now, of course, there's weight gain and other lifestyle issues that may lead to an increase in blood pressure too, but because I focus on lifestyle and hormones specifically related to menopause, I'm gonna stay with that and tell you a little bit about what you can do to affect your lifestyle to improve your blood pressure. I'm also gonna link to a couple of videos that might help you as well, so check out the description below. So onto what you can do to help prevent high blood pressure if you're not dealing with it and what you can do to better manage it if you're already dealing with high blood pressure, if that's already on your plate. Number one, this may sound really obvious at this point, but please curb sodium intake. And the easiest way to do this is by cutting out ultra-processed salty foods like chips, pretzels, canned soups, luncheon meats, cheeses, pizzas, even small amounts of these foods if you're dealing with high blood pressure can put your body over the edge. So please be mindful in how much you consume. Now the American Heart Association recommends that we consume no more than 2300 milligrams of sodium per day for people without high blood pressure and 1500 milligrams per day with high blood pressure. Less than that is good too. Another thing you can do is pepper vegetables that contain nitrates into your diet. Now these naturally occurring nitrates convert to nitric oxide in your body, which can help improve blood flow and decrease blood pressure. Now I'm talking strictly about veggies, not lunch meats and other ultra processed foods that also contain nitrates. Now the nitrates and ultra processed foods just don't have the same effect on your body and in fact can increase your blood pressure. So you're probably wondering where can I find these naturally occurring nitrates in these vegetables? Well, they're not too hard to find. You probably eat them already. Broccoli, beetroot, carrots, spinach, cucumber, cauliflower, pumpkins, leeks. These are a few great foods to start throwing on your plate more often. And they'll also help you decrease your bad cholesterol too. Got lots of fiber, good stuff in them. Number three, start working on a good sleep routine. Sleep is so important. Sleep helps regulate your stress response and through menopause and beyond, our stress response can leave us women a little more high strung than we used to be. Sleep can help to manage this better. Now I know that night sweats can make it really hard for some of you to get a complete night of sleep, but at the very least, start setting up the good routine on the front end. Start by turning off all of your screens an hour or so before bed so that way your brain can get the release of melatonin that it needs to help make you feel tired. I want you to avoid caffeine after 9 a.m. and I know this is really early, but that will help you regulate your natural cortisol levels, that stress response. Then take five minutes to just breathe deeply before bed. This will help you activate the parasympathetic nervous side, which is opposite from that fight or flight side. Just five minutes of deep breathing. Number four, obviously cut out alcohol and other inflammatory foods that are in your diet because they naturally drive your blood pressure north. And the fifth thing you can do is to exercise, and I'm sure you probably know this already, but exercise, especially cardiovascular exercise, helps to strengthen your heart, your blood vessels. It makes it easier for blood to move through your body. Your blood pressure will naturally lower when blood moves easier. Aim for about 30 minutes of movement a day. Ideally, make the movement moderate to vigorous. And if, for no other reason at all, cardiovascular exercise just makes you feel good mentally too. So that's what I've got for you today. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, go ahead and leave it below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay in the know on all things healthy through menopause and beyond. Thanks for showing up.